Okay. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that obviously, you know, most of us are friends with a lot of the players, right? So when your your friends are matching up with your friends, like you kind of, yeah. you know, lean towards like being, you know, being interested in that match. You know, I mean, it sucks that it has to be that way, but you know, it's competition. But at the end of the day, as long as everybody's still friends, it's all good, man. You know, I don't have friends. Yeah. Anyways, uh, moving next. Uh, you know that. <laughs> Wait, okay, come on, man. You're supposed to be like, you're not supposed to say that, bro. What the fuck is this guy, dude? Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another podcast. Uh, I would like to say and apologize. No podcast yesterday, so a lot of you guys are probably on YouTube like, where's the podcast? Where's the podcast? But we did move the podcast today uh, to Wednesday. So, um, yeah, there's that. I think we'll be going back to normal on Tuesday next week, but uh, we'll see. right? Some people kind of said that Wednesday was better. They like Wednesday better, but... We'll kind of we'll play it by ear. We'll, we'll see how it is. I know a lot of people are used to Tuesday already, so I'm leaning towards keeping that. But how's everybody doing today? It's been a minute since we've had some of you guys on here. How's it going? Doing all right. What's all right. going on? Yeah. Feel pretty Chilling. good. How Chilling. Are you, man? Yeah, we're just on the grind. I see all of us grinding, man. Everybody's streaming. Everybody's <clears throat> playing Genshin. Everybody's just, you know, just doing stuff. So, yeah, it's good. Right, Brian, do you have every unit in Genshin yet? Absolutely not. Yeah. I, I, will, I will be doing summons for uh, Klee, though. It seems people like to... Uh, what you call the uh, the how, summon how much videos. money? How much money does it take to get all the units in Genshin? You will buy it. You, Why? Because no guarantee, bro. Right you now. no 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 no. You sneeze, you can get them all, dude. No, but they said, but they said there's like a, a pity system thing in that game. Right? Exactly, exactly. There's a pity, there's a pity yeah. system, but you're not guaranteed to get the units. So like, okay, so the way it works is it's ninety summons for a pity, um, okay. for on character banner. So rate up. Um, if you don't get it on the first one, you're guaranteed to get it on the second one. The rate up unit. But there are a bunch of units that are not rate up or have no rate up banners currently, so you could technally pull indefinitely and never get it. Oh. Yeah, but, but the thing eventually, is that okay. eventually they will <coughs> get a rate up, anyway. so eventually you'll so get everything. Okay. Nah, but the pool is so small though. Let's be real, uh, Pat. Like, are, are, how are you not used to pulling stuff and not being able to guarantee anything? Like, let's look at some of those. We got seventy nat five rotations, man. I, I, I can't <laughs> guarantee a fire Ryu, dude. I'm freaking down two hundred thirty thousand crystals, bro. Oh my god, dude. Just chasing a unit that's not even good. Just to uh, have. I don't even. I don't even have a single street fire nat five. Yo, I pulled seven win Ryu's this month. That's crazy. That's seven. A lot. That's a lot, dude. Fucking crazy. Uh, and everyone was a blessing, and everyone had a fire Nat 5 next to it. Everyone, dude. Mm. <laughs> That's crazy, dude. Pain. Pain, dude. <clears throat> All right. Uh, let's go ahead and um, hop right into topic number one that we got today. Topic number one. Be careful, Tyler. There's a lady behind you. Oh, yeah. he knows. He knows. <laughs> 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 topic number one. America's Cup. Right, that's the uh, that's the big hype going on here. That's going to be happening this weekend. Uh, I also do believe that the EU Cup is going to be the following week, though, just as a side note as well. But uh, America's Cup happening this weekend. Um, who's going to win? Right, everybody's got those different events going on. I'm gonna pull up my, my mind right now. Prediction events. Who do you guys think is going to win? Who do you guys got? Right, we got the matchups. Who's going to win? Who's going to win? Yeah. Let's Firstly, I just want to say I don't like the way Brian put J Mac and uh, Ken Buller in the same fight round one. Okay, if you, really, it, you made it really hard for that pick. Okay, if you guys don't know what he's referring to, when I was in LA, we actually got to do like these random pulls out of these boxes, me and Digon. Uh, it's a video on the eSports, some of those eSports channel, if you guys haven't seen it yet, along with player profiles, which I highly recommend you guys checking out. Those videos are insane. But uh, we got to randomly pull those out, and uh, yeah, it came out as J-Mac versus Ken, so it's like a rematch. Basically, basically Island Grown's fault, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, it definitely is fault. It was 100% random. Like, I don't really care who plays who, but okay. This is, if I, when I tell you this, it's going to sound even more rigged. Okay. So when we were recording, right, because they wanted us to film how we uh, randomly took out the, the names, right, because they had to figure it out, we did a test poll. Guess what the test poll was on the first one? Same thing. Same thing. Same thing. It was J Mac and Ted Baller, dude. <laughs> so when we actually did it, you couldn't, you couldn't shake it up a little we bit. We did. Bro. We did. We um, shook it up because it was four Easter eggs per box, right? So we put it back and then we shook it up. And then when we pulled it, it was the same one, dude. That's why we were just like, damn. What is the chance of that? Your, you gotta work on your shaking skills, bro. I don't know, man. But I mean, like me, but he also shook his box too, right? So it was like, it's not like the same person pulling the same box, but. Anyways, all right, we'll talk Confirm. about that lineup Brian first. Brian doesn't too. want Canada to win. That's not what. Come on, I love Canada, except for the fact that they're not letting us uh, come into their country. Other than that, uh, I love Canada. <laughs> I think there's still a ban, right? I don't think we're allowed in Canada still. You, you, United States citizens. Yeah, we are... can't go up. No. Yeah, they, they don't. They don't I, uh, I think it'll be Ken and Ricky personally. That's, wow. That's my that's my predictions. Ken and Ricky. Yeah, yeah that's why I put as well. 
Ken is an unstoppable force. <laughs> wow. Are you okay? So uh, let's 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 start off with the the first one we oh. talked about there, Ken Baller and J Max. So let's talk about the matchup a little bit more as well, right? So as we know, this is gonna be a rematch. Ken Baller versus J Max. They played each other. Uh, did, was it a sweep? Did Ken Baller beat him 2-0 or was it 2-1? I, I, I forget the exact logistics on it, but we know Ken won, right? Yeah, Ken won. So you guys are assuming Ken will be able to beat him again pretty easily? Like Jeff won't do I any research and... No, it's not that Jeff won't do research. Easy. I think Jeff is an extremely brilliant player and I think he has the capability to beat Ken. But Ken has an extremely strong draft and roster and has really good runes and is also just as smart as J-Mac is. I think Ken is slightly favored just due to units, but the Han advantage Con could push over. Yeah, was he able to successfully use Han at all in the the the, the preliminaries? Not really, right? It wasn't really a, a pick. It was pre band. It was pre band two games, wasn't it? Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. Right, because we still have pre bands here, and you know if Jeff is gonna be playing Hathor at all, I mean he's just gonna it's, it's gonna be two rotations out of the three that's gonna be pre band of Patter. So that's out of the story, right? So now you're now the the question. My analysis is. What, what else does Ken have? Everybody knows Ken has Ragdoll, right? How hard is it to play against Ragdoll? It's, it's, a, it's a strong LD5, but it's probably one of the most common LD5 that's played against and, you know, able to be drafted against, right? So now you have J-Mac here, who's, you know, obviously faced a lot of Ragdolls in the past, right? You guys are saying he's completely outed. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just siding with J-Mac because you guys are putting him as the, the loser here, it's, by the way. I mean, I think we can all agree that, like, even if you play against Ragdoll a lot, there's a lot of things that can change with Ragdoll on the field. Yeah. Like, so. unless you're running 100 crit on every single unit, there's a lot of things that change when you're playing against Ragdoll. Fair. So, yeah, true. Ken, Ken's, of one of my Ken's one of my brothers, but, uh, you know, he's not as strong when there's the pre ban as you guys make him out to be, you know. Without the pre ban, he's very strong. With the pre ban, he's not that strong, dude. If you're worried about, if you're worried about, Pater's only good when you don't know the guy has Pater. If you know the guy is Pater, you just don't draft that makes Pater very effective. It's not a, I mean, it's still a very good unit. Don't get me wrong. It's a top five unit, but it's manageable. Pater's trouble yeah. when your team is like Oki and, and Hathor, and then all of a sudden the guy last picks Pater. You're like, oh, okay, you know, I'm, I'm stuck. You know what I mean? If you know the guy is Pater, it's not that serious. Um, I kind of like that. Ragdoll, that's, that's, that's Ragdoll, you, though. Ragdoll, you could play around it, or if you, like, some people are just terrified of it, myself included. So it's like, I'm going to ban it 98% of the time. You know what I mean? But with the pre-ban, like, you could literally not fight either one of those units. So what makes Ken different from a regular person with zero, LD zero LDs when it comes to pre-ban? You know what I mean? You could pre-ban Ragdoll, game ban Pater. Pre-ban Pater, game ban Ragdoll. You know, so Ken Baller is not as strong because of the pre-ban. Um, don't get me wrong. He's a good player. He's got a strong account. Like I say, he's my brother. I picked him to win. I'm not going to lie, okay? But he's not as scary as people make it out to be when there's a pre ban. That's all. Mm. Yeah, pre ban is big. Go ahead, go ahead. I think it's, I, Wait, go, uh, I'm gonna let go. Pre ban is I think the same the same way. Uh, Ragdoll is a huge problem, and when you can just take him away in every single match, even by pre ban or a normal ban, it's just it's so much easier to deal with it. You know. Yeah. I mean, you got to respect the pre-ban because you got to understand, like, even a guy, right, like a favorite, like Thompson, right? Thompson's far less scary when there's a pre-ban. Like, I could beat Thompson with a pre-ban many more times than I could beat Thompson without a pre-ban. You know what I mean? Not that I'm favored ever against him, but I'm just saying, like, in 10, if I were to win three with no pre-ban, I would win four to five with the pre-ban. Because if I just take out Gianna and take out Nefestis, he's pretty much a little above an ordinary account with very good runes. Is what Thompson becomes. Right. I think that's without the pre band, like in, right? yeah, the pre band. Without the pre band, they're insane. You know what I mean? Right. Like, how do you deal with Ragdoll and Pater? You can't. You know, but you could technically not to deal with either one of them. You know what I mean? That that's where the pre band yeah. really affects people with that don't that, yeah. that don't have a lot of top tier LDs. That's all. Okay. So we it looks like if we had to put a percentage on winning for uh, Ken Baller and J Mac, I think that might help players to uh, be able to make a prediction a little bit better, right? Because some people still might want to choose Jeff. Right, because he's a smart player, right? But uh, what kind of odds do you get? You give Ken Baller and uh, Jeff is it like a seventy thirty then kind of odds you give it. Yeah, I would do like 65, 35, 70, 30, something like that. Okay, I'm fifty five forty five for me. Also, it's, Jeff just got close. Jeff just got Barbara too, so you know. Mm, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, Barbara, Barbara, one. Barbara is a good unit, man. You know, it puts Jeff it, has really good runes for that. It really affects exactly yeah. Barbara affects 
like the way the game starts and that's where barbara you know becomes a factor you know right i would even say 50 50 yeah that's a fair that's a fair guess it's, too, man. it's close it's got to be close like those guys are both really really good yeah i mean we're not talking about preliminaries anymore right we're talking about this top eight all these guys are here for a reason yeah. so yeah. They're, they're not dummies True. say that so yeah. I will say that's the match I'm most looking forward to, though. Same. I think that will be the most interesting match for me. Same. Watching Ken versus J Mac. Yeah. Okay. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that obviously, you know, most of us are friends with a lot of the players, right? So when your your friends are matching up with your friends, like you kind of, yeah. you know, lean towards like being, you know, being interested in that match. You know, I mean, it sucks that it has to be that way, but you know, it's competition. But at the end of the day, as long as everybody's still friends, it's all good, man. You know. I don't have friends. Yeah. Anyways, uh, moving next. Uh, you know that. <laughs> wait, okay, come on, man. You're supposed to be like, you're not supposed to say that, bro. What the fuck is this guy, dude? All right, next matchup, next matchup here. Um, Heaves and Dreams Joseph. Yeah. Uh, if you have any information on them, feel free to you know talk about it for what you understand, what you know, and what's your guess? Hey, Lucky, if you have any info, hey, I'll start with you. Who, um, who would you give it to? I've kind of just gone to Dreams Joseph based on experience. Um, I think tournament experience is going to play a bigger one there. Um pretty standard draft from heaves i know he's got a lot of lds but he's been drafting a lot of that chiru gani hathor kind of stuff um and it is quite a it is the meta play for tournament let alone just ladder so i think joseph's kind of used to that so it just kind kind of comes down to how does heaves um adapt or approach dreams joseph because we all know how joseph plays he plays different right he comes with a different approach uh he makes free-to-play units work as well so it'd be interesting to see what he brings out um knowing what sort of play style heaps has right you know what's interesting as well do you do you like as as we've seen dream joseph in the past he's a lot more i mean it's fair to say he's a lot more introverted right uh as a person so you know it might actually be more advantageous that these years like you know preliminaries are always online but like this actual cup is online it might actually give him a, a you know we can see how he plays without actually being live because you know he gets a little bit nervous people get nervous even if they have experience you know people 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 so, play strong in their underwear man yeah people play yeah. strong in their underwear that's I'm what i'm saying you. so i mean this might even be better for him right but the same can be said about any contestant right whereas you know now they don't have experience but they're playing online or they're at home to, to be honest i don't care how much experience you have it it, it it takes some nerves to do it you know what i mean yeah. you're on the stage you know everybody's watching you know and like you don't want to lose as much as you don't want to you don't want to lose for yourself as much as you want to lose for people that don't want to lose for you. Like you want to lose, like, you know, like your friends and your fans and stuff, you know? So it's, it's a lot of pressure. I mean, but you know, it definitely helps being home in your underwear. I'll tell you that now. Like yeah, the heat yeah, is definitely off. Helps, the cameras are sure. off. The lights are off. You know, it's a big difference, man. Fair. Sure. So what kind of probability would you that, give them? I think that heaves, I think heaves is going to win. Oh, um, okay. Change heaves. Different. Dreams. Joseph has that special RNG, but heaves has a really, really strong account rune wise. And I didn't know much about Heaves the player, but over the last year of like, you know, just being able to see a couple of replays and watching him play in general and, you know, the preliminaries and stuff like that. Listen, the guy plays good, dude. He's not a, you know, he plays good. You know what I mean? And when you play good with a strong account, like you're, you're a big deal, you know? And like I said, Dream Joseph is a very standard player. Uh, Heaves has some special LDs, but he still plays pretty standard, like Lucky was saying. But in a battle of standard, as long as Heaves can figure out a way to deal with his Beast Riders, I don't think Dreams Joseph can beat him. There's a little bit of a gap in the room quality of the two accounts, for sure. Mm. Okay, what kind of probability? Just give it more... 70-30. Uh... 70-30 mm. mm. Heaves? Okay, okay. I agree oh, with how, that. How about, how about... Oh, go ahead, go ahead, uh, Tyler. Go ahead, elaborate. I, I actually wholly agree with that. He, heaves, to me, has... From watching him play and like meeting him in person a couple times, Heaves is like the most calm and collected player I've ever seen with RTA. Like, I feel like, I feel like that man's an ice cube when he plays. Like, even when he's losing, he's just an ice cube. He just keeps it cool. And it's, it, it really shows in his play. It really shows in his replays too. Okay. You're going also with a 70-30 then? That's kind of your feel as well? Uh, right. Yeah, 70-30, maybe, maybe 75, something in that range. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, how about you, Lucky? Going back to you, uh, your uh, probability. 64. You can stick with yours. 60-40? 60-40. 60 40 60 40 joseph. joseph okay yeah fair fair take into account experience yeah, I, I put joseph as well because i just i didn't know exactly who to pick there but i just have this feeling about joseph having more luck that day so uh, yeah he's lucky he's feeling. definitely lucky got a kind of line there bro yeah. i'm just going with the feeling of rng yeah how about he's your got those special powers what kind of percentage you're giving then you still maybe 60 
maybe 60 40 okay yeah i think a yeah. lot of uh, people at home that are trying to pick they i think it's nice that tyler and uh, pat were able to give some insight on heaves because people at home might not know as much about heaves right they've seen joseph the last couple of years so they've seen the name they might pick it but now with that information you might want to you know reconsider right or, or maybe look back at some of the replays of you know heaves and the way he's played and how calm and collected he is in making your decision i'm on the fence on this right i'm 50 I'm 50 because I, I can see both sides of this one and i don't have enough information about heaves as like tyler and uh pat here do so um it, it kind of kind of kind of pulled me back a little bit to, to go 50 50 so i'm not exactly sure who i'm choosing for that one yeah all right let's move on to match number uh match number four here or match number three here chokamu and tree all right let's talk about that one that, that is two heavy hitters right there chokamu yeah, right that's he, a hard one he streams he's been here on the podcast right everybody knows him as you know gianna player super fun lively guy uh, very knowledgeable of the game and then you got tree has been in literally every single competition someone's always had, right? Very consistent, very solid player, very strong box, very solid runes, uh, very smart, very awesome as well. He's got the whole package, right? He's a super fun personality. He's like super cool. Um, who do you think is going to win between these two? I'll let you uh, I'll let you take it away first this time out, Tyler. Go ahead. Thoughts on Chokamu Tree? Sorry, I need to reach my mouse with my other hand. Uh, I think Chokamu is actually going to win 60-40. And the reason I think so is because draft and i think he runs a draft so i think his draft is something that's less stationary than what tree likes to run and i think that he can overtake him just by like taking extra turns i think his first turn advantage is a lot stronger too like tree tree is undeniably an amazing player right mm -hmm. tree has set metas in the past tree is very solid in his drafting and his confidence but i do think that trokamu can take it over him especially having the wedge up i think that's a pretty strong unit for him mm. okay how about you got uh, sixty forty for Troka. Okay. I would, yeah. I think same. Both players are insane. I know Troka has insane runes as well as Tree, but I think it's gonna be close because Tree likes to run the Arda and stuff like that. And I think the I think the Gianna Sierra will will prevail in that one. Mm. I think it's it's close, but I think Troka is gonna get a one. Okay. How about you, Lucky? I think um, I went Troker as well, 60-40, and that's because of how troker has been going recently. He's been playing out of his skin probably the last, like, two, three seasons of RTA. He's kind of stepped up out of nowhere. So, um, yeah, I kind of went down the path of Troker. I think, yeah, he's been doing, he's been doing really, really well. Um, so, yeah, I went 60-40 Troker. Okay. Last but not least, Pat? Well, as you guys know, Troke is a guilty of mine, also like a brother, you know. <clears throat> um, but if I had to be honest, as far as the two accounts go, Tree has a stronger account. Um, but Tree, to caveat what Tyler said, you know, he creates metas, but like this meta he created is retarded and it's not working. And if he continues to pick like that, then he has no chance to beat anybody. Forget about Troke, any, but he has no chance to beat anybody the way he's picking. That first pick Molly shit's got to get out of here. All the Koreans that are following his first pick Molly are getting chopped up. You know what I'm saying? This is like, it's terrible. Whatever he's creating is terrible. So Tree is the better account. If Tree plays properly, he probably has a chance to beat Troka. Pretty good chance to beat Troka. If Tree picks the way he's been picking the last couple months, then Tree ain't beat nobody. He shouldn't even be there right now. And I'm good friends with Tree, and I'll say it straight out. He shouldn't even be there the way he's picking. He got lucky to even get this far, the way he's picking like that. So I would, I'll call it a 50-50 because I think both of them have a good chance to win depending what they do. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I, I'd like to say that <clears throat> Tree, it kind of depends on the day. You know what I mean? Like, it depends yeah, on the day. he does like funny his, shit. Like, he's, <laughs> he, he, he can be really good, like, if he really wants to on certain days. You know what I mean? But just sometimes he just... He just, he just, he just, I don't know, but he's, and we all know he's a smart player, right? I love the guy. I think he's good, but uh, I'm going to give the slight advantage to uh, Chokomu as well. So I think this is one of the first ones we're kind of all in agreement here that I'm going to give it to Chokomu as well, because bro, if you don't know, man, this man's been like studying, man. He's testing, bro, his whole house, he bought whiteboards for his whole house. He's writing down all the data, all the analytics. He's, t he writes down literally what tree eats every day. He knows what tree's doing every <laughs> second of the goddamn day, man. And he's like, he's, he, he. End of the day, I'm memeing, but he's he's doing a lot of planning, right, and a lot of preparing. So I think it'll I think it'll definitely pay off for Chokamu, and uh, I think he'll be able to pull through this one uh, with that advantage as well. So I mean, I'm I'm, I'm gonna give a 60-40, maybe even like a 65 to be honest, right, with uh, how how prepared he is. So 
Yeah. Okay. First one we came to a green here was uh, Chokomu there. Uh, last matchup here, Popo Panda and Bregeki. What's your thoughts, right? Regeki with a really, really great showing in the preliminaries. Very smart player. Very awesome. Calm and collected. Uh, as well as, uh, you know, Popo Panda being more of a, you know, veteran. He's been in, like, a lot of the WCs, right? He's here for a reason. He's got a strong account. Very fast, I heard as well. So, what would you what would you say between those two? We'll let you go first, uh, Pat, right off the bat. Um, <clears throat> Popo Panda has had a strong account for forever. You know, he's had a strong account when he was in SWC prelim uh, regionals in, in 2017. Um, he has a little bit of experience edge on Rigeki, but the way Ricky is playing lately, like his level of like nerd power right now is like hard to touch. Like I, I can't like, there's no way. I don't think it's even fair to even have think about picking against Rigeki at this point. Like he's playing strong, like forget about the units he has, whatever he got a little lucky, pulled a couple usable LDs. It's the way he's playing, dude. Like I've been watching him play a lot, you know. Um, he's he's playing too strong right now to to like have anybody vote against him, regardless. What's your percentages? I'm gonna have to go seventy five twenty five. It's pretty strong. Okay, <clears throat> okay. How about you, got a card? <clears throat> um, Ricky, I think. I, I mean, I'm gonna be a bit biased as well here. Go ahead. A bit, of course, because because it's Ricky. But I, I also think Ricky is a stronger player here. And I would say 70 to 30. Okay, fair enough. Probably something like that. Yeah. Okay. How about you, Lucky? Anything else uh, input to add in? Or just your... 70-30 uh, oh. Ricky. I think pretty much what Pat said, he's playing out of... He's, he's one of the other guys. There's four guys I reckon that's playing out of their skin in the America's Cup. That's Ken. That's J-Mac. That's um, Troker. And the last one has to be, you know, Ricky. They're, they're all playing out of their skin right now. That Ricky's uh, he's probably the best I've seen play throughout the uh, America's Cup. The way he played there, it, it was just really good to watch how much he's actually progressed throughout his time in RTA. So, yeah, definitely, definitely Ricky, I reckon, 70, 70 30. Okay. How about you, Tyler? Hmm. Yes, it's true. Like, every, Ricky is on a huge hot streak right now, <laughs> and his drafting is incredible. It's it's very hard to like try to deny it logically. I think the only the only thing that Popo might have under his belt as the advantage is that he doesn't show a lot of what he has. Like we know what he has from the past, but he doesn't show the way he plays, and he doesn't we he doesn't show. So he does have that like element of surprise, but it's hard to compare that to like someone who is just killing it right now, like adjusting to drafts, pivoting super well. Like when you when you take that ability to to like set up the match and then you apply it to somebody who can also do the research on an opponent, I think it's I think it's still favored in Ricky's side. I'm gonna go sixty forty, um, only because of because the elements of surprise can actually be quite relevant. Yeah, that's why I think that a lot of times people that come competing and they stream and stuff like it's a little too much to do. So I think that people should you know if they really care much a lot about the competition, they should you know sorry to the fans or whatever it is you know, but like. If you RT on somebody else's account, your fans won't be mad at you. You know what I mean? If you have to stream, you can stream. But yeah. I think protecting your stuff is pretty important, too. It, it can Tyler be Rings also reversed as well, right? They can use that at your advantage. Because right now, you know, RTA, you can reruin whatever you want. So you could do some fun stuff and do stream and then put it back. You know what I mean? And that would be okay, too, I think, as contestants. And that might throw people off when they get into, you know, SWC, right? They'll, they'll think your, your speeds are pegged at certain amounts. And it actually can turn into an advantage as well. So it, there's pros and cons, but yes, Pat's right. If you are just using your street account and you're like talking about stuff, like sometimes when you're streaming, you just kind of share your information, right? Cause you're just streaming, right? You're just having a good time. But at the end of the day, it's a big tournament that you're trying to win. So you got to keep that in, 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 in mind as well. My analysis here between Raigeki and Popo Panda, I of course will also say Raigeki is definitely the favorite, but uh, this is undeniable. The probability that I have set for this is a hundred to zero. Because of the profile picture, baby. That's my best friend on there, baby. That's a good luck, baby. You can't lose with that profile picture, bro. Yeah? That goddamn profile... Hey, bro. That profile picture got you some... Uh, got you a nat 5 as well, didn't it, Tyler? You summoned and used that yeah, picture and you I, got... Yeah? You got a Savannah I pulled, up, I, pulled up the key, I pulled up the Keith pick as a joke and I pulled a Savannah in like five scrolls. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I was like, all right, well, undeniable. Keith is literally even, the strongest play. RNG factor. He doesn't ever. even play some of the sort anymore, too. Yeah. No. But uh, but yeah, that, uh, if you don't know that that's uh, that's a picture of uh, he used to stream though. He got partner and then he just disappeared. And he just he used to do only RTA content, like G two G three RTA content only. So yeah, definitely a lot of people. Right? 
Oh, is that no? He had he had a bunch of garbage back then. Uh, he had Lydia, oh. Jara, and uh, Leona, but obviously before the, the before the buff to Leona, so nothing that was usable in terms of LDs. But it was Molong era, so he had fun with that. But yeah, um, he's got that profile picture. Something to factor in though, okay? An actual real factor, right? This is very important for you guys picking between Regeki and Popo Panda. Regeki is currently AR40 in Genshin Impact. So how much time has he actually been focusing on preparing for SWC? Think about that, okay? Think no, that's about how that. he's, he's that's relaxing, right? That's he's, uh -huh. he's meditating. Yeah, listen, yeah. the, the, the yeah. nerd Goddamn power, guys. He's, he's playing Genshin with his toes, bro. He's playing something <laughs> with his hands. <laughs> What's what's uh what's Popo's AR? Do we know if he's been playing? <laughs> he's AR he's zero. He hasn't played. <laughs> no, like but... Popo's too busy. He works medical. He's too busy. Yeah. On, on a serious note, though, Regeki definitely give me the favorite. I, I might even give him a little bit more though with the memes and stuff. But you know, eighty twenty, honestly, right? Popo Panda's is a great player. Don't get me wrong, but Regeki has been playing very good. I've seen him like do Popo matches Panda. and even play a ladder and like um you know sometimes I'm like when they're when they're playing we're like in Discord and I'll just be like oh how come you did this instead of this and when he like tells me like why I'm just like. Oh shit! That's like that's like fine. I, I didn't I even I didn't even think about that. Like that was the reason you used this skill on this to do that. Like it's just he he's on another level, man. He's he's thinking real clear right now. So I think he's a very he's very playing good player. dude. He's playing real strong, man. Yeah, very very His good player. Ban sure. is real strong right now. All right, so out of all these uh out of all these contestants here, who's your top two? This is the last question I got for you guys here. Who's the ones that is going to um? Because I think only top two make it to worlds, right? Who's making it to yeah. worlds for you? Who you got to take for worlds? Obviously, you have to look at both sides of the bracket uh, to kind of make a decision, right? You have yeah. Troka, Tree, Raigeki, and Popo Panda. So only one of those can go, right? And on the other side, right. you have, what is that? Heaves, Dreams, Joseph, Ken Baller, J-Mac. Only one of those can go. Who do you have to go to uh, Worlds? Ricky and the winner of Ken versus, uh, Ken versus J-Mac. That's that's what I'm putting. I think Ricky, Ricky, undeniably, I will put as the number one on the right side of the bracket. And left side, it's whoever wins between Ken and Jeff. Okay. That's fair. Fair analysis. How about you? Uh, I, 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 I pick Pat. Ken and Tree. After Hard saying to... Ricky was yes. so strong, after saying Troka, you, you know, know you, you my know, brother, Troka is my brother, you know why? my brother you know Troka. Why I okay, okay, okay. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I pick Tree because Tree <laughs> is. Come to us as baby, bro. Here we go again. He has the, Every he year. Has the violent proc button, Every which year. you don't have. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? In Korea, they're watching for that button. <clears throat> when he winks his eyebrow, all of a sudden, bang. He's gonna proc, and that's it. All so, right, so every Ricky year you can't beat the Korean button, bro. Let me, let me tell him. Ricky's strong, him. but the Korean button is the strongest. Let me tell him here. If you guys don't know why, cause I mean, every single year, every con, like every tournament, why cause got this bro science that come to us got a button. That will let that player win, right? We had beat D, right? Korea favorite, Korea baby, beat D, right? Now it's Tree again here. Uh, so okay, uh, okay. So and, and Tree was fine. Tree was fine last year, right? And then when it got to, it got to EU, right? But the the, the event was held in Europe, so <laughs> EU had the button. So all of a sudden, the two Europeans were chopping people up. You see how crazy it is? Think about it, man. You guys got to think. It's not bro science. There's facts. Dude. There's this is facts. the guy. This is the guy that like does bets on like sportings, or if he does, he does on sportings, and he actually wins. And then all this stuff just seems so real, dude. I mean, it's hey, real, man. It's you're not, real. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. I mean, it's all facts there, technically. Yeah, technically. True for to extent. Okay. How about you? Uh, how about you, uh, Lucky? Who's your two to make it through? So I reckon Ricky on the right side, and on the left side. I can't pick. I'm on the fence with Ken and J Mac. I, I've picked Ken for now, but I honestly feel like J Mac's got the advantage. Did a pick ban, uh, did a pre ban, pretty much. Sorry, um, just because he can dictate how he wants Ken to, like how he's going to approach fighting Ken. Whereas Ken needs to kind of counteract the the pre ban, right? So it's I think J Mac's got a slight edge, but right now I've got Ken locked in just because of how consistent Ken has been, especially like got legend in special league as well so the man is in the form of his life so between those two on the left side but definitely i, I feel like ricky's on the right side okay okay got same. same 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 really? right Yaki. right ken for now also i put ken for now but it could be j mac i'm not sure i put 50 50 on those two guys so Wow. So we'll everybody's you every we are we're all so far everybody here that it's kind of said it. You guys have pretty much ruled that everybody except Ken J Mac, and I guess Waika saying Tree instead of Ricky though. But it's been yeah. pretty oh pretty 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 similar. All right, Tyler, what's your thoughts? 
I started. You started? I started by saying that it was going to be uh, Ricky oh, I thought, and I thought Pat started. Ken versus Jeff. Oh, okay, okay. I opened okay. that one. Okay, Um, for me, same thing, right? I mean, it's kind of interesting how, you know, Ken and Ricky were the ones that, you know, kind of won and the qualifiers and made it through here to the to the to the cup and they're they're still the favorite through these going again against these competitors uh to win the cup so we'll see who wins i'm very excited for the tournament happening on saturday if you guys don't know we're doing a bonus stream uh i'll be streaming on saturday uh i'll be looking for some people to kind of hang out so i don't know if maybe tyler lucky god i mean i'll i'll, I'll reach out to you guys and maybe what time is it out again i have actually no idea uh let me pull it up does anybody know what time it, it is that's uh let 12, 12 morning, pacific right? i think 12 pacific okay so 12 pacific so it's 12 for you as well right i'm pretty sure so for me it would be like uh 9 a.m so it would be a little bit earlier than my usual stream, but I mean, I don't stream Saturday, so we'll, we'll, we'll start it up and we could do a stream, just kind of commentate, right? Peanut gallery kind of thing. I don't know. Uh, I don't know how many people I invite though, because sometimes when I've done too many people, it's, it's been a little bit uh, too hectic. Too many peanuts. Yeah. Too many peanuts at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> but nonetheless, uh, look forward to that stream this weekend, as well as the tournament and uh, good luck on you guys predictions. Hopefully it kind of helped you out if you guys were on the fence, right? If you guys know, you guys can modify your picks anytime. So you can modify it up to like, an hour before the tournament or like you just be safe just do it by friday and you guys should be good you should be safe on that all right moving on to topic number two here let's talk about two units that we might actually see a lot in swc whether it's the cups or i mean obviously a lot more in the ladders as well here let's talk about chun pong win art master let's talk about praha the water oracle why are they so good um let's talk about what they got buffed recently what you've seen and how are they being used right a lot of people want to be uh you know want are interested in this how to build and how to use these so I'll let anybody take it off first here to talk about any of these units. Can you elaborate a little bit further? <clears throat> sure, I'll start. Okay, I'll go ahead, start. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Chongpong, I've seen him uh, a lot of times since since the update. Uh, Swift, Swift is the best. He he's he's usually they're picking him with other trippers as a Gianna or a Chiwu. With Gian or Chiwu. So yeah, he's going as a second stripper. His defense break and like he offers a lot in this kit. He offers a lot. Like <clears throat> he's a good unit. I think he's a good unit. I think his base speed is good as it is. I wouldn't want him to have more base speed because it would be really dangerous. Uh but yeah, if you got the good runes, he's great as a second stripper. And yeah, a great unit, great unit. Really. Yeah, one one or two base speed, right? One or two yeah, base one speed. or two. Yeah, so people. It's you're, good you're that saying, it's not too. You're people are too using much. him as a second stripper for that S two yeah. defense break. So like you first turn strip, if anything misses, you just S two defense break, right? But if you strip everything, yeah. do yeah. people do S three then, or do people just do S two for the defense break still? <clears throat> it depends like, what they need. In depending on the yeah. yeah, yeah, it depends. Yeah, Fair enough. If you run wow. damage healers behind it, then you go for the defense break most of the time. Otherwise, it depends on the pushback, right? Because if you push back to 75%, he's your second or third unit. Sorry, right. three sets of 75%. If you uh, if you push everyone back and you're the third unit, you're almost guaranteed to get a second turn before the enemy moves. That's crazy. Yeah. That's that's pretty good. Like that that he he kind of like for me, he kind of seems like he's in that savannah slot with more flexibility, I feel. You know what I mean? In the draft, right? Because like with Savannah, you have more... to make sure you have to strip, yeah. and then you get that mega reward, right, with the S three, and then you get the buffs, and and all it, it's crazy, right? But him, he comes in as that potential second stripper, or he can he can do that attack bar reduction, uh, so it's yeah. it's kind of nice. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Tyler. Yeah. What are you it's like Savannah, but less damage and more utility. Yeah. So Swift is kind of the build right now. Is what you've been seeing, Godacon? Is it more going to be on that support yeah. Swift build? Maybe some crit rate, if anything, but mostly just Swift um, with high act. Definitely. If you if you want to go damage you can always go damage on pretty much anything but yeah just try to focus to get that speed to the level that you need it to be mm -hmm. don't don't go crit damage or anything like that if you can't afford it but you need accuracy though right so this like, would fall in line with yeah, more like accuracy of course yeah so it'd have to be like an okie yeah. right yeah it could be like an okie build if you go crit yeah, damage sure. i think you can run it like savannah you can run it low accuracy like 15 to 30. if you're using it like, as a stripper focus though then it needs to have the accuracy Okay, fair, fair. Because you can, I mean, you can even, make up a little bit in artifacts, right? To, 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 to kind of compensate. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Huh. Like even Chiwus are built on crit damage these days. Like high end Chiwus. Yeah. I have seen so, so many despair. Much similar components. build as well. Oh, despair. <laughs> Interesting. Can you elaborate on that a little I bit? Fought, I fought somebody's despair chunk pong that was plus 190. Like at least plus 190 because it outsped me with a 10% lead. And I was like, all right, well, turn <laughs> speed barbs not fast enough anymore with no lead. 
Yeah, well, if you get if you get if you got that rune quality, it's pretty good. Well, well, I mean, if you can get your absolute best despair set, and you do have yeah. like a despair set with a quad speed or something, like it's gonna be yeah. wild. I mean, any yeah. unit with double AOE is gonna be a decent candidate for despair, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Come so on, it's not terrible. Sure. Uh, I've been using Chung Pung. I never use Praha. I haven't used Praha. I never ever used Praha in my life anyway. Um, but I don't think I'm going to start now. But she seems like she's pretty good. Oh, we're talking, about, we're talking about Art Master. We'll, we'll keep it separate. Oh, Art Master yeah. first? Okay. Yeah, yeah okay. we'll just separate so it. Master. So... Yeah, I've been, I've, I've been using Chung Pung. Um, I think it's really good. I know Thompson's been using it every game. But, you know, it's a little better on his account because he has Gianna and stuff like that. Hmm. But, uh for me it's working out pretty good but like it's like you know like god was saying earlier you have to have him as a second stripper obviously because you only bring him they could just ban him you know what i mean and then you have no strips so it's always been a situation where you're doing chi wu chung pong or gianna chung pong or you know chung pong triton or something like that you know it has to be some kind of double strip uh but his kit's really really strong and i still think the best you could do is violent regardless because if he could just two into three or three into two either way you know what i mean it's it's extremely strong even when not on crit damage he does decent damage and even if he doesn't do damage the fact that he can control bars like that forget about the cooldown part of it just to zero out the bars allows your team to go again next and you know you're gonna be able to put a pretty big pretty big dent on the game so uh, have you been playing against a lot of them or are you, are you actually using it and if you're using it you have a violent one is that is that what you're saying mine's not, mine's on violent i've been using it probably I'm not really trying to climb right now, so I'm trying to just mess around for fun, but I'm actually, you know, inadvertently climbing a little bit. But I've been using it probably 80% of the games I've been playing. Oh, wow. Okay. And the ones that I don't get it in, it's pretty much because they took it too. So it's like you see it a lot a lot more often now, so. Hmm. Interesting, yeah, it's definitely interesting. interesting. That, that buff definitely helped them a lot. Okay. Uh, what about you, Lucky? What have you uh, experienced um, so far? In so, I haven't been doing much RTA, but from what I can see, mm -hmm. he is potent because it can be built on anything. Right, it can be built to like as a like second stripper, but on Swift. So you know that three three hundred three ten speed stripper could be built to spare. So a little bit on the slow side on Will um, to kind of move after immunity providers. He could be built on Violent, as what Pat was saying before. He can go second into third. It just comes down to what sort of team, right? He's he's so flexible of a unit. You can play turn two with him. You can play turn one with him. Um, I think that buff brought him in quite well into a lot of drafts because he does he pretty much plays two parts here almost it's he can almost replace the the gani or the savannah in the sierra oki chiwu gani sort of draft you know that sort of team there where you got the strip into cc lockdown he okay. can kind of fit into that draft really really well either replacing the savannah or replacing potentially not not mm -hmm. a bit harder to replace ganymede but it can kind of fit into ganymede's role if you don't have a ganymede in that draft because you got the double strip into full full oh. lockdown. The one thing I don't like about him is that it's wind, so it kind of like overlaps with a lot of the wind units, you know. So if like you're doing using him as a stripper for like Hathor or something, right? Your team becomes very wind heavy, you know. So yeah, granted you CC something, but if they just go like Juno or you know Fire Monkey, like you're not gonna be able to kill it before it kills you. You know what I mean? And that's the problem with like the game always making the wind units OP. Yeah. Uh, if if they had made him fire or even water, like it'd be you know a little bit more easy to more easily used. It's a little awkward right now because they're all wind. Like all the good units are all wind. Right, it makes you susceptible to more fire. What's interesting right, is exactly. that you know when when it comes down to like when you draft and you're doing RTAs, you you watch how your opponent's drafting and depending on who they bring in, when they bring in a specific unit, in this case a Chun Pong, you can kind of analyze and deduce that hey this unit does on, is on this set, this unit is on this set, right? Um, so it's like either you can tell like immediately, all right, that's going to be this unit. Uh, it's going to be on this set, right? Or you're going to be able to diagnose it's going to be, you know, on this and this. But with Chun Pong, I feel like, like we talked about, you can play turn two, you can play turn one. It opens up for so much more variables that even if you, the draft comes out, you still don't know what Chun Pong you're up against, you know? And it does actually play a factor on what set it's on, on what you're going to play and what you're going to anticipate and prepare for. So I think that that adds a small factor that, you know, we didn't really talk about too much here for the the power of chun pong right you don't know what you're gonna play against another side note the only problem with units like chun pong and stuff right now is that there's the triple revenge verds mm -hmm. or you see a lot of them actually now they're on double revenge and one set of will so you can't use the chi to like single pick one you have to you have to use your skill three mm -hmm. and triple revenge Verd like is the bane of you know bane of those units existence you know what i mean uh 
or Antares, you know what I mean? Like, and Antares, no matter how many times you reset or whatever, push it back, like, if, it, if it's going to go off, like, you can't stop it, you know, and there's nothing you can do to kill the Antares faster. Um, so those two units, like, you see, you, so pretty much when you pick Chung Pong, you try to have fun, you're pretty much putting yourself in the situation to get Google played, you know what I mean? Like, you're putting yourself in the position to be fighting units you don't want to fight. So that's like the bad part about Chung Pong right now because Triple Revenge Red is just too strong. You know, it's just, it does too much. Like I had a game yesterday, the guy literally first picked Verd. And I was like, wow, what a shitty first pick, you know? And then he follows up with Chi Wu Chung Pong. You know, because he's so he's so jaded by Verds already. He first picked Verd to run his combo afterwards. And he lost because of that. But, you know, like he's so jaded by Verds already, you know? Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Like, it's it's true that when you're drafting Chun Pong, it's just in an awkward spot because of his element. Because, like you said, it's opened a lot more susceptible to fire. And then when you're more susceptible to fire, I mean, during the draft, you're, you're trying to figure out what kind of water you could come in or if you're going to ban that fire. And it just, the water units that are good to use don't really potentially mesh well with the comp that you're already starting to bring in, right? With, with Chun Pong. It's just kind of awkward. So, yeah, if he was water, I think that would that'd be, uh, that'd be pretty good. I think he'd be... Pretty damn broken, yeah. actually. If it was water. It'd probably be the combo every game if it was water. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because you'd have all oh, the elements yeah. and you'd have so much control. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Now this strong. is a this is a fact that's important, right? A lot of people always ask, you know, I need help in RTA. I want to figure out how to learn and be able to play the game better. But one of the biggest aspects you can go back to is learning how to draft. The aspect of understanding how to draft, what to bring in, and you know, thinking ahead actually is a big factor. A lot of times people just bring in anything. They go into RTA and they just say they get propped or they just lose, right? But a lot of times the matches, even SWC, the tournament matches are kind of won through the draft. You can see a definite favorite through the drafts. Right now, SWC players are a lot smarter, so you'll notice the drafts will kind of even itself out. But I always say pick ban is 60% of the fight, man. You know what I mean? Pick fight. ban is huge. Like most yeah. of the time through pick ban, you already know, like, us, like you know who's the favorite after pick ban. Mm -hmm. Now it's just a matter of how the RNG plays out. You know, does armor break land? Does he proc? Does he not proc? Does he despair stun? You know what I mean? Like that that's what comes yeah. down to after that. Like, but you have an idea of like, oh, this guy's probably gonna win right now. You know, like most you very rarely rarely, even though like the high level players, like you see this it's gonna be high level players this weekend playing, you're still gonna see a discrepancy at the end of the pick band. You know, it's very rare to be like, wow, this is a really even match. You're rarely ever gonna say that. You always say, Wow, this guy drafted a little better, you know? Mm -hmm. It's always gonna be like that for the most part. It's very rare that you get a, a very equal draft. Yeah, for sure, for sure. All right, so it looks like Chun Pung's a contender. I think we're going to see it a lot more in ladder play, for sure. We might be seeing it in some of the, the tournament play as well, moving forward. Uh, but very strong unit, got that buff. So um, I really, I'm glad to see, you know, different units in the, in, 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 you know, mixed in into the draft. So it's nice to get new units. Even though meta, metas are very similar, it's nice to see that mix of new units. It's, it's, it's fresh. Now, speaking of new units, speaking of water units, Praha. What have you seen from Praha here? I mean, the, the, the small buff that they did to, I mean, not really small, but the buff they did to S3, now, you know, not 50%, but 100% uh, chance to land the sleep on everybody for one turn before accuracy resist check. And of course, the addition of additional damage coming into play the last few months here. What do you guys feel about Praha? How are you guys enjoying and, uh, or enjoy using it or being tilted playing against a Praha? And what's the builds you've been seeing? We can start with you again, Godacock. I know you do a lot of RTAs. I haven't. Family. I haven't really seen her a lot, oh. but today I was like, you know what? I kind of want to build a Praha because I didn't see it and I want to test it. I want to see how is 100% uh, sleep actually affecting the games. And uh, since I play with a lot of sleep, I play with Celia, I play with Akia, uh, stuff like that. I wanted to see, and I was about to build her and I have one rune that needs one more speed upgraded so I can speed you into my tableau. And I use a legend grind and it rolls four. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to build her. <laughs> and I just stopped there. So yeah, I just, I literally need one speed to have her speed you into my tableau. I wanted to go violent on a crit damage build mm -hmm. with very high accuracy. Crit damage, that's Actually, interesting. A violent accuracy set. Uh, but yeah, I didn't have one speed to, to speed into Tabla, so I didn't build her. Mm. But yeah, that's how I planned to use her. Okay. So she can use before Tablo, and then Tablo gives another turn, and I can go with the third skill to sleep everything if I have to do it like that. Yeah. Right. And I can see the mix of uh, Jamir or Jameer in there as well um, with that yeah. combo, right? Obviously, because yeah, Tablo's sure. there and you know being able to cleanse for is sure. kind of nice. 
So sadly, I don't have a Jamire, but time yeah. to get one. Don't give him one. <laughs> time to get so one. Scary. I mean, Temple <laughs> Jamire is really awesome. Like, there's, there's a lot of great combos. People don't know how to play against it, right? Because it's a big speed thing. Uh, what's your thoughts, uh, Tyler, on Praha? Have you used it, or have so you just played I am against use, it? I am using. Praha, okay, okay, actually. cool. Um, so my Praha is tuned one speed below my Juno in case I want to sleep. I've been I've been playing less seriously. I've been playing like in the rank like a thousand range. Um, not like hard sweating trying to push. Um I just I pick I pick dump they you know, I pick I pick like I pick like the teams where it's like Vert is a hard counter to this team and I'm like I'm just gonna leave the Vert in and see if we lose. You know, um so like I've been picking triple oracles for example against a lot of people who are running like Vigor or Bastet. I'll pick uh, I'll pick Sierra first and then I'll pick Juno and Praha together. So I she's She's decent at the protection and control. If you have something else that allows you to either force a hard target or allows you to, like, either control their attack bar. So, like, I she pairs really nicely, in my opinion, with, like, a Gany because you have so much protection on your team between, like, the reset, the strip, the sleep. Her sleep is actually good, and it's very consistent. Um, I'll be honest with that. It is very consistent. The only problem with using her sleep and the consistency of it is that it's really hard for her to get the second turn right away. And so you're almost reliant on the violent proc out. Uh, later in the game, she does rotate really well with uh, additional damage by speed artifacts. Like Mine's only like additional damage, like 60, and then a bunch of attack, HP, and defense. But if you if I had her like on one of my better violence, she's like 265 on crit rate with maybe like 200% speed by damage, she would be a lot scarier. Like she can kill, she can kill Junos really well too, which like when someone picks a Juno against me, if I'm picking like Bastet and stuff, like I will slam the Praha down because at the end of the game, that, that Praha will always beat the Juno. Right. She has a good strong pick against you. Know, true, true. Yeah. <clears throat> How about you, Pat? Um, I don't you... use it. Okay. I've well, never used Praha in my life. Um, I haven't fought against it. And I think the reason why you don't fight against it much is because the meta is still the same meta. It's still the win meta. So it's very hard to just, you know, slam down a water unit, you know, no matter how good its skill set is, how good, you know, how impactful it is. Like when you're looking at three wind units in the face, like you're not going to do anything. You know what I mean? But the art, I think above all, like the buffs she got, like the artifacts obviously buffed her the most along with the other oracles, um, just the multi hit, the extra damage. Um, I fought against one, maybe I seen a couple like replays of it being used and all the replays I've seen, like Tyler said, the sleep has landed on every unit every time. But I don't think that one turn CCs are impactful enough in this game. And that's where Hathor is still, you know, Hathor is still the king, you know what I mean? The queen, whatever you want to call her. Um, mm -hmm. The two turn is the two turn. You know, the one turn is like the backup plan. Like Oki's one turn, right? You could say that, but at least Oki has the backup plan of resetting a unit, you know? Okay, also like Praha's turn one right away, turn, too. and then, you know, it's a little rough. And like I said, she's a water unit. And in this game right now, you rarely get to use water units. And if you do, you're probably picking some some kind of combination of Barbara or Vigor or more down the line, like a Shiho, you know? Like, I, you, like, when do you even get to Praha? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess it depends on the style you play, but I don't think there's a lot of room for Praha right now. Hmm, interesting. I think the only way to bring Praha in is if you gave her an attack bar mechanic based on the number of units slept. So, like, if she gained like ten percent or fifteen percent no, attack bar no, for every unit that was no. slept that on her skill like three, then she time. actually she actually gets enough pressure and enough CC because she rotates. That's like Oki. Okay. That's a lot. Oh, yeah, dude. she rotates really really fast. That's really like strong that. already with, with with the rest That's of her really kit already. That's first really strong. Strong. But see, yeah. see the thing with Praha that makes her like not meta is that once you use your skill three, you are super stationary. So if you find something that goes with that team that allows you to rotate out of that sleep without requiring the violent proc, then she might have enough pressure, but you also have to give her like one of your tier one sets to be at that like- Right, and that's why she has to speed. be like a, a secondary CC, you know what I mean? Cause that mm -hmm. one turn sleep just doesn't do enough. She sits around for too many turns between that. Right. And right. when there's one turn sleep, there's the proc, you know, the, the extra turn ability. So- How about you Lucky? Uh, not easy. What's your thoughts on her? Um, yeah, pretty much I uh, align my thoughts with what, what Pat was saying. The meta is too wind strong, like wind heavy. So it's really hard to bring her in. If anything, she's a fourth or fifth pick and, um, she's not a bad option now. That buff does help her out a lot. I just haven't really seen much of her. And I think it is because she's a lot, she's a bit more on the passive side of playing. There's a lot more impactful water units that you can draft. Barbara was brought up, Vigor was brought up that just do a, a bit more. And kind of round out a comp a lot more as well. There's already enough strippers out there. There's a lot of other CC units that can be drafted. But 
on the waterfront, she like she's okay, but I just think it's really hard to draft her into you know what is predominantly a uh, a wind meta. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. I was I was thinking a little bit opposite though. I mean, I, I think a lot of people might use it, especially if they like like we said. Uh, obviously, if you don't, if you have other strippers, you might use it. But I think she's a good like fourth fifth pick as a unit that can AOE strip. It, it's got that CC for you. It can combo well. Let's say if you have a Jolsey. Um and I think that the the wind disadvantage is not that bad uh, with Bra because of the fact that additional damage doesn't factor in that anymore, right? And most of her damage is going to be coming out of additional damage, her turn cycling, her S1s that she's going to do. So because there's no disadvantage, right? It's it's not as bad. It is an issue still because it's going to reduce your damage, but additional yeah, damage is... Like well, 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 there's the problem too right. with what you're saying, right? Because mm -hmm. it's all wind units. You're not exactly turn cycling either, right? You're not glancing half the time. Because you're not critting. Oh, so you're not turn cycling true, either. true, true. I didn't think about that. True. Yeah, so... I guess that might be true. It, it, too much, uh, too much wind might be an issue. But I mean, if you're gonna be going up against any fire units or whatnot, I, I feel like she's not gonna be that bad, right? With the meta being, you know, a lot of vigors and whatnot, it's not too much wind. Yeah, that's why possibly it. like a so, fourth, fifth pick, like Lucky said, it's it can fit in. You know what yeah. I mean? But like, you get into the spot, right, where it's like, okay, he has two fire units. Do I go, you know, vigor or do I go Praha? Do I go Barbara? Do I go Praha? You know, like. Yeah. <laughs> Pra has a chance to be impactful, right? Mm -hmm. Barbara and Vigor are guaranteed impactful. Like, guaranteed they're going to give you a chance to do something. And they gel with the team better, genuine, you know, generally. You know, they both have an armor break. You know, Barbara could be your booster. It could be your armor breaker. It could be your DPS. Whatever it could be. But Praha is, if it works, if everything works out, Praha is great. For those two, like, they have a chance to be great, even when it doesn't work out. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, I was thinking it would be good against like vigors and stuff because you know they constantly have the to decide to buff, right? It's it's kind of nice. Yeah. So, but again, that's actually um, that's actually what I'm picking it for a lot of the time. Yeah, because you're seeing a lot of vigors, right? So I think we can all agree fourth, fifth pick. I think it's gonna be there. But yeah. again, I going back, how good of a set are you gonna give a unit that's fourth, fifth pick? And if it's not a good set, sometimes it doesn't make it viable enough, right? So it all kind of trickles down to like, dang, like. Can we even actually really use the exactly. unit? Exactly. So yeah. it's it's something to think about yeah. for sure. It, it it works really well into like the bigger Veligal sort of drafts. Um, it really opens mm. up those sort of players. But there's not many people running that anymore, to be honest. From what I've what I've been seeing on ladder, it's it's a it's a very stationary comp, and I think people are not running it as much anymore. Mm. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Um, was there any other units that you guys saw from this last balance match that was hype besides Winar Master and Praha that's been popping up or because these are the the, the two I, I've been hearing people talk the most of but I mean mostly the Chun Pong was the the big topic there but any other ones that are coming into the into the meta or into the field a lot more I saw the water art master a couple of times oh yeah like how's that most people kind of just kind of threw him off to the side like he's not good enough right maybe just against Chi Wu's but he's not good enough uh, you know but I think he needs more testing yeah I could because I play because I play Celia I got a I got to fight him a couple times, but mm. I don't know. It's like I strip a unit, the attack bar gets boosted, but if the unit doesn't proc, it doesn't do anything. So it is dangerous because there's a chance to proc and, and disrupt my, my team. But mm. I don't know. I haven't seen a lot of it. Under, the, I don't know. I'm not, I'm the, not the sure. Problem, the problem with it, it is that it's water. That's the problem. With <laughs> Again, same thing. Fair. It just can't be picked enough. True. Like, like, okay, you counter a Chi Wu, but the rest of the team counters you. What else are you going to do? You counter the Chi Wu one turn, right? Do you, now you have to follow up with a team that's very impactful. You know what I mean? If the guy doesn't have Gany or Hathor, he's probably not going to Chi Wu, right? So he has the Hathor. So after you boost and take a turn, what are you really doing that makes the makes an impactful move that with the water art on the board, you can still win the game. You know what I mean? Because the water art's taking up space now. It right. stole you the turn, but it's taking up space. Right. Right? Because you only have four spots. I always say in RTA, all four units need to be impactful because they're taking up a spot. So if they can't do something to impact the game besides giving you a turn, they're not. They're just not impactful enough. Yeah. <clears throat> like, that's why I think his problem is first, he's water. And secondly, his kit, aside from that passive, is not impactful enough. Fair. Fair. You have anything to add, Lucky? Um, yeah, no pass bar. <clears throat> His first goal does nothing. If yeah. you think about it, it really does nothing. It doesn't add any value. It doesn't, um, doesn't it reduce like, attack bar? 
Yeah, but it's water, bro. Oh, it's what's glancing. <laughs> what's <I'm gonna> <laughs> yeah, it it's it's still it's land. Really, it's really good when it works, but it doesn't always can't push back the Gany hot door. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. But, <laughs> but you, eventually you can. You can't say you're gonna glance every time, right? That one time you S one and it does, you mess up the you rotation. You only you glance right, the helps. times you need to not glance. You don't know this. You don't know how it works. I mean, the one time you need do? to not glance, you're gonna glance. Yeah. It's always like that. I mean, you're you're pretty much predominantly just S one ing with him, though. So I mean, you're just be reducing attack gauge or messing up turn order constantly. That's it, right? Like you want this to move before the molly then so it kind of cleans out you want the molly to get reduced right you want this to move before this so you can't set up defense break with vigor so you can't nuke so there is some value to it yeah, but, but the problem is like you're saying, saying like, right you, with the molly there right but with the molly there and you have a water art master you can't win the game you know what i'm saying like you have no damage to win that game well hopefully you've drafted more damage but it's true <laughs> that's true, true but molly would actually help you out a lot though molly uh molly would have to s1 a lot and every s1 gives you attack gauge so you get free attack yeah. gauge every time technically as it strips Right, if it's if it's tripping anything, so Queer damage Molly. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of scary, right? <laughs> uh, what about you, Tyler? Anything you want to add to it? Not really. Okay. okay. I mean, hey, gang. I mean, there's not, there's not too much else. I I get really annoyed at Chung Pong just because skill three seventy five percent three mm. times is just like frustrating. But I get it. I kind of wish that his skill two didn't defense break on non on like units with no immunity. But like, I get it. It's just wind unit and it just feels like a lot to give a kid the yeah. attack bar pushback reset, i don't know why mine does break, everything good strip yeah mine does all that except the armor break part mine doesn't armor break it's, it's every time very I good at glancing, just like my whole it's like team's a doctor bro but it doesn't armor break yeah. it could be used in a similar team as as a tiana let's say because when someone picks a tiana you have no idea if it's usually you assume it's shield will because that's how most of the Tianas are these days, but it could be Swift. I fought a violent one yesterday. Huh? So you fought a violent you Tiana? What to do? Strip you in defense break? Yeah, here, violent, what the fuck? violent what? Tiana. Yeah, shield will <laughs> violent Tiana. I don't know. Big, big crit in damage, skill two, baby. Yeah, crit damage, violent Tiana. I don't know. Yeah. What people, speed do you pick a Tiana at? Like, I don't, I don't see the benefit of the violet at any. Well, there's a lot, there's a lot of those though, uh, Island. Like, there's a lot of those slow cleaves. No, no, I know the slow cleaves, but what is the benefit of the Tiana violet thing? Is what I'm saying, right? Because like, skill two is big damage, bro. Skill two is big damage. I guess, but there's no defense break. But I guess it's big damage. I guess if you turn two, it just you you definitely run it. You you definitely run it with some kind of armor break. You got to run it with like. How you gonna run an armor break? You're stripping first, and then you're violet, right? That's what I'm saying. So, so you could just you, you're gonna use S three with Tiana, right? And any shield will. So it's an awkward break. file. The next rotation maybe, but that's an awkward yeah, file rotation, that we're gonna. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of it's kind of awkward, but hey, I mean, yeah, shit, I mean, catch you off, catches you off guard, whatever. Or like, I mean, I guess it's better damage. than just having shield. Yeah, the thing is, everybody is like, the thing is, like, everybody's so fast now that like whenever you see a Tiana, it's most of the time going to be a slow cleave. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because like you almost can't outspeed with the you know having a Tiana as your as your first turn to move, you know? Because the best Tiana you're makes like what? Like the best, like 210, okay, 310 Tiana, right? And then like a lot of people have over 310 sets now, which is kind of like, you can't never get the first turn. Dude, so someone in chat said, someone in chat said if Tiana stunned. That's not true. If you play turn two, <laughs> imagine how Thor s 2 you and you vile it out. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably like, I'm safe, I'm good. Like this turn two Tiana, I just slept it, right? Just files out and Dude, you just If a Tiana's <laughs> that slow, then I know it's, I know some funkies up. Like, if I look at the attack bar and I'm like, but I vile, you would not expect vile. There you, go. you would not no, I'd expect, expect despair. <laughs> I'd expect like despair crit damage or something. <laughs> Freaking weird. That's five head though. Yeah. All right, that's cool. Uh, with Art Master, uh, Praha, we talked about a lot of them here. We talked about uh, Hei Yang as well. Seems like when Art, Art Master is here to stay, it looks like he's found like a spot. People are going to be using him, and I think he's going to be pretty successful right now. Unless there's going to be big shifts and like changes of units, he's going to be here for this next season. So if you have one in storage and you're know, looking to do some RTAs, I think you should bring him out and test him up, get used to kind of uh, using him because I think he provides a lot of benefits. So we'll see how this goes. Maybe even the, in the America's Cup and some of the other tournaments. All right, uh, topic number three. Uh, a lot of people are talking about Street Fighter units. Collaborations ending in, you know, very soon here, beginning of November. Do you think they're getting a buff? And if they get a buff, what do you want to see from it? Like, what do you want added from what you know? It could, it could just be any mechanic that you've always wanted to see in the game. Like, what do you want to see? Yes, buff, and, like, what needs to be added? Because they're all so lackluster, right? And we're expecting we make... them to be able to be used in the next season <clears throat> RTA, which is, you know, beginning of next year. So, what's yeah. your thoughts? Can we make, can we make was... Ryu not garbage? <laughs> Who not garbage? Win Ryu. Win Ryu. Ryu. 
Oh, yeah, it's scaling so low. I, f- I feel like, aside from Dark Ryu and Light Chun Li, everything else needs help. Yeah, the only, I, I, the only I'm one actually tier... a fan of Dark Chun Li, though. I'm a fan of her. Yeah, I, think Dar- I haven't been able to test it properly, but I think Dark Chun Li has a place because it disrupts some cleaving. Yeah, it's like and Dark Ryu, Light Chun Li. Dark Chun Li, like uh, I mean, uh, Dark Dark Ryu, Light Chun Li, and then there's like the the Dark Bison, Dark Chun Li. Like they're they're kind of okay, you know what I mean? Like they're kind of okay, but then everything else is just like another like category on its own. You know what I mean? Uh, like, water Ryu is pretty high up as well. Water Ryu. Okay, so. third category: Water Ryu and like Fire Ryu with Molly. I, I think it'd I've be right seen below those. Light Chun Li, if not equal with Light Chun Li. Yeah. Wait, what about this? If you could rank your top five, what would they be? Top five Street Fighter units. Dark Ryu, uh, dark, dark Light Chun Li. Okay, yeah, just dark, dark three, four, Chun-Li. five. Three, four, it'd be five. Dark Chun, it'd be Dark Chun Li, Dark Dal Sim, and maybe one of the Ryu's, Fire, Fire Water. One of those two. Yeah. Water for water sure. Really yeah. like I think the Water Ryu's can be pretty good. It means speed lead, yeah, global speed lead, and and disruption. Yeah. The Plus one thing they could do to water, the one thing well. they could do to water Ryu to make him actually. The buff he would need, I think, is to get the turn instead of getting bar. Same like demon. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because they're speed tune, you don't get the turn. You know what I mean? Like you only you only get full bar. You don't necessarily steal the turn. That's a uh, big doesn't difference. it give you one hundred percent attack bar? You don't steal the turn though. No, doesn't it you can, give you one hundred percent attack bar on top right. of what you currently have? So uh, like I don't know. 90, you go to 190, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. You usually can take the turn though. That's the thing, but not every situation. Yeah. It, if it's added, it's probably you're probably cutting. Yeah, I think the, because uh, it yeah. says the same thing as like Konamiya, where Konamiya's research says fills the allies' attack bar, and right. fill is plus 100. percent Let me check. Well, either way, I think it needs to be guaranteed yes, cut, and that makes a big difference. Right, right, right. Okay. Well, what does Win- what does what does Wind Anubis say when it dies? Does it say fill the attack bar? Uh, but it doesn't matter because when he dies, it comes back with zero, could... right? Or does it come yeah, back? Yeah, when you come back with zero, Wind- you d- die and gain. Yeah, he comes back with zero, dies gain, so he's at a hundred basically. But so if you have water, HP, water if you have, you if you have attack bar, would revive. That's another story. You know what I'm saying you got sleeping on that substat. I'm just kidding. That's garbage substat. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, Tyler. It should it should be plus one hundred percent from the wording. Okay, so you should cut that. So, I mean, obviously, violence still takes precedence against you, but it's meant to disrupt swift units, I think, as the main purpose. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ah, mess with violent, bro. If it gets the turn guaranteed, <laughs> like Triana cuts, you know what I'm saying? Cut, cutting, and, cutting and getting full bar is two very different stories, man, no matter how you look at it. Yeah, it is a big difference, that's for sure. But yeah, I just feel like all the bisons are so, like, lackluster. But especially the main element ones, the ones that a lot of people have. Fire Which, one, the third skill sounds insane, bro, but it lands it does. Yeah, it's, okay. <laughs> it's like a it's like a base monk, but not. Yeah, if it does <laughs> what it says it does, God, you know what I mean? But it doesn't it, do what it says it does. They pack so much in the wording, and then you yeah. say it like do the skill, and then you're like, wait a minute, hold on, wait. What did bro, it they say? Put the the words in and they forgot to put the skills in, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Attacks with immense power of destruction to land does nothing. Sounds great, does nothing. Yeah. Do you think they just have to tweak a little bit of the multipliers just to make them a little bit higher? Like even Win Ryu and stuff like that? Like make them hit a little bit harder then? Because like they're going to be bruises, right? Bisons are going to be like beast monks, but right now they kind of suck more than that. Yeah. Right? Because we would expect to use them minimally. We would expect it as good siege unit. You know, I was expecting them to be siege meta changing units. They can be great. You'll see more of them on defense, more on offense. They would be good. Right, yeah, like DJ said, they, they are kind of slow. So if they're slow, they need to have some other kind of benefit, higher multipliers, or do something more, right, would be nice. I, I, I really want to see that. They don't have to be RTA worthy. Uh, if they are, so be it, right, if their mechanics fit in, but at least Siege changing, because I know a lot of people do Siege with it, right? Changes up some of these defense we're seeing on Siege. Keep seeing the same defenses. What I want for the Bisons are if you land Provoke on skill one, you gain 15 or 20% attack bar, and I also want HP scaling on it. Because, like, they're really slow, so they don't rotate very fast. And they don't have HP scalings on, like, all their skills. They have it on some of them, but some of them are just, like, really weak and really weird. Like, I don't think Wind Ryu has... Or, sorry, Wind Bison has it on skill 1 or skill 3, just skill 2. Yeah, I think giving them a little, a little bit of bar is fair. I mean, because they're so slow. Um, I don't know what else would be... Uh, I mean, 
light bison. I think that I think light bison. Uh, granted, you can't test an RTA and stuff right now, but taking fifty percent HP from your team is pretty detrimental. Can be you know can I mean? be it's advantageous hard. too, depending on the combo though. Like you have to keep you have to remember that you have you know does more damage when it's low health maybe, but um. At the same time, it's one of those like all in things, kind of like if you don't kill, you're going to get killed, you know? So it's like, it's a really, really all in way to be, you know? Uh, Turn two cleaves, that's their best friend. I mean, it's a, it's a super that. weird skill for a unit with 98 base speed. Yes, that too. So yeah, I guess, I guess turn two. I think it's turn two, powerful turn two. Yeah. Like if you turn two and it you have like be. light, light, uh, what was that, like uh, water, demon, and those kinds of units, right, that already benefit from low health, like you're boosting, you're nuking, dude. Like something's gone, right? You're just playing turn two. You know, the attack proportion to lost HP. Yeah, exactly. Artifacts. You can run that sh stuff too, yeah, yeah, and maximize your turn two. That's possible. And then on your Lucian. Yeah, true. <laughs> That way you can run a fatter Lucian then, I guess. So they have a harder time killing it, right? If you're going to get, get these other stats any, uh, uh, as well. The problem with this game is right now, though, aside from all that, is that it's very, very, very hard to run a successful turn two comp. Like, once you turn yeah. two, you have, like, a 30% chance to win the game. Unless you have Ragdoll Jaeger on your team. Yeah. Or Tian Lang, I guess you could say. You know, something like Molly. that. Yeah. Yeah, Molly maybe. You know, even Molly, like, you have to, you have to get lucky with the passive you know they could really just wipe you out even with the model sure. you know what i mean but i wish in mollies all the time and kill more offense you know like mm. the thing is like it's regardless once you turn two like even if you don't get wiped out right two units are reset this bar is messed up your turn order is screwed up you know they could do so many things to manipulate you you know what i mean like once you go to turn one like they sleep your bison so now your whole team goes before bison goes you know so you lose the attack buff you know, like, there's a lot of things you could, they could do to you once you turn two. Like, turn two is very hard to play. Very very hard to come back from. Like, I my runes are slow, and I still try my best to play turn one because turn two is very hard to come back from. Your speed tuning's all off. This is reset. This is not. This is sleeping. This is stripped. You know, it's it's this is glanced. You know, like, there's a lot of funny things that happen once you let the other guy dictate the start of the match. Yeah, well, I think turn two is uh, harder to play, though, for sure. But yeah. turn two, like being able to uh, recognize in the draft in RTA, like when turn two needs to be played, you can actually, you know, win with a high degree when you when you can recognize it. But it's very difficult. I feel like most of the times you're playing turn one, it's a lot easier, a lot smoother and a lot, you know, a lot more manageable to learn and to play and to draft. But turn two is hard, man. Turn two is really hard. Like yeah. actual turn two. I'm not talking about like double shit will turn two. I'm talking about turn two with like, um, yeah. you know, your normal draft. Like that's really hard to yeah. play. It's so far ahead, dude. Like, you yeah, look like six moves ahead, man. It's kind of, it's kind of, kind of crazy. Um, Real big brain, dude. For sure. Still um, might fail. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so anything else you guys want to see for these Street Fighter units All right, that are kind of lackluster from what you've seen or what you've tested? I don't know. I just think we should have been able to use them this RTA season, personally. I think they just dragged it out a bit. There's no point releasing unit this early and not letting us use it for two or well, one and a half. I think it has seasons. to do with the Chinese law stuff. It's yeah. mostly. Yeah, or, they, or they could have let us use them in a uh, in, uh, special league. Just to, yeah. to oh, goodwill. Know. Goodwill. Goodwill would have been goodwill. nice. Goodwill. Or goodwill. Yeah, goodwill would be fine, you know? Yeah. But I, I, I'm giving them the excuse of legal purposes, but that's it. Like, honestly, that's like tethering the line, right? Of the reasoning, right? It could just be just because they didn't want to do it. And I, I think they should have had it released already. But I'm just thinking IP issues. That's it. So not honestly, they sense. let people use it. And they probably would have sold more packs. Probably. God forbid, like somebody you know, like was like, "Oh, this unit is amazing in RTA," and all of a sudden, everybody's gonna you know, you know, pump all their funds into trying to get it. Right. Could it be so, maybe the know. logistical? Now I'm thinking of maybe like a tournament play, like these tournaments. Then the, you know, it, they they didn't want players to be able to have it and then build it and then not be able to use it for like the tournament, like SWC yeah, and stuff. SWC. And then after that, they have legal rules use with the IP because they can't use it. You know, and they can't have those units on the screen. China having issues with the IP, like it could. It, I don't know if that's a bigger headache, but I could kind of see it. I don't know. So I'm thinking, but. Maybe. End of the day, man, like, I was really hyped up. I was going to do, like, Whale Wars and, like, summon for people and have the battle with level one units of Street Fighter. And I was like, bro, can't even do the goodwill, man. Like, I, I was a little disappointed, though. Yeah, I will say cool. that. Yeah, whatever the reason I is, just I want to use Ken. Yeah, you want to use Ken? <laughs> Ken is so good. I think turn one, Ken, with a, with a crit rate with slot. Ken. Slot four. You just go with third skill. You can set up uh you can set up the 
<clears throat> what do you call it? The branding and then strip decrease attack bar. I mean, that's kind of it's kind of nuts, right? So you are you are you calling it here right today that when they're released, you think Ken might be a, one of those new free to play option units for RTA? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ken. Okay, Ken, yeah. Ken is honestly he, he a seems very good. very yeah. good unit. Yeah, I can agree. Really good. Yeah. I can yeah. agree. People sleep on Ken. That's yeah. Yeah, I was building a, I was building like a like a weak free to play dragons team on someone's account who had like not that many towers and someone was like use Ken. I was like, alright, let's try it. And Ken just like instantly stabilized the whole team. That unit yeah. is bonkers. And it's super consistent because the extra turn mechanic. What's up for us? Yeah, uh, for us is Ken and Fran best buddies. I mean, I could see people drafting those. I could see it. I could see it. Right? I mean, obviously not at the top end though, because they have so many other options, but I, I can see people bring those in, right? You don't got nap fives, so you need something good. I mean it's it's gonna be a solid right. unit. Yeah. What about He's the four fire stars? as well? <laughs> Yeah, fire, man. <laughs> I, I think the four stars need some uh some love yeah they... like all of the dalsims yeah. yeah except the dark but yeah they're yeah. all pretty lackluster i don't think chonies are that great either except the ld ones they're cool yeah. but not great the water one may be usable i haven't tested it or anything, elemental rifts maybe. it seems to be water the 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 rifts, yeah. yeah it does really well water rifts. but it's just kind of yeah <clears throat> I feel like being good in Rift is not enough, though. You know, like it may still still could be considered a useless unit. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. Because it's 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 element uh it's element locked, right? When it's when it's right. you know not element not element locked, and you can use it everywhere in PVE, then yeah. But it's element locked because it's water. That's true. Try to dragons, but it's just not enough damage. I don't know. Might as well just Weird. use a Stella if you're gonna use that slot in dragons. I heard Stella actually has yeah. harder than the yeah. the, the, the yeah, water she, chunly. she does. Yeah, she I does. Stella a while back. I use Ken and Water Twins in DB12. Right. That's my team. But like Wind Chun Li, like Fire Chun Li, I think Fire Chun Li boosts and gives like crit rate buff or something. And then yeah. you have like the, the Dawsums, they do like some kind of AoEs, but it's, it's just not enough, right? Like, what, what's not enough? Like, they just don't do enough? Multipliers aren't enough? Or like, what or the chance of proccing the actual abilities? Like, there, there's a lot of four stars that don't do anything too so it's not true. like you have to make them do something you true know? but this is street fight units <laughs> and also they're going to release the comp to us version of the street fighter units right so there's a little hype around it you don't want to like it's like in this day and age when i mean they something, gargoyles and did nothing you know like true true but this has a little bit more hype around it right and more people would have these than the gargoyles because we got the release of sp summons which we'll see if they do that in the future yeah, but i just want more people should have them right I just want one of them to be like good for something so that people can at least use it, you know? Like, oh, make I one, of one of each of them good for something. Sorry to interrupt yeah. you. I want one of them to be good for something just so I could feed the other ones to the it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah all of us have like 40 or 50 about. fucking Chun Lee's and Dalsums <laughs> in storage. <laughs> Can't use them for anything, dude. Right, I, how max, many... I maxed my Chun Lee's a dark one. I maxed the water one. Now I'm just going to be stuck with every other Chun Lee I get. Four max Chun Lee's. That's one. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Dude. A lot this month. Two hundred thirty thousand. Don't crystals. pull a light one. You're kind of screwed. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like or I feel dark like one, I guess. maybe like one of them. An idea is just to give it like beneficial block, so it can be another steel fortress option. I don't know. That, that wouldn't be too. The bad. Light Dawson sucks at that already. Wait, the light Dawson <laughs> awesome does block beneficial. Yeah, yeah, but like, well, even know why would you not just so use Lingling instead? Lingling is so much but better. But like, but yeah, like something to go with the Lingling. You know, something to go with the Lingling. I like Dawson's been good for freaking, you know, Garbage. good for the fucking artifact dungeon. And then, yeah. They're like, oh, it's terrible. Because, <laughs> like, could you imagine that? Maybe, like, Win Chun Li, but then you have Ling Ling as well. So, like, everybody goes, oh, yeah, the best for Steel Fortress is the sisters. You know what I mean? Like, that'd be kind of cool. I don't know. Buff it enough to be a viable option in there. That'd be nice. I really want to see that. It's tough, man. Yeah. I just want Fire Fire you. Not because it's good. I just want it because I don't have it. That's all I want as well. I mean, you have Molly, right? So it's gonna go well together. Molly and Fire Reuse. That's, that's that's the known wow, combo Steve. that's been working really well. So that's I the most gotcha thing man. I've ever heard in my life. I don't need it, but I just any, want I'm so it. Sorry. <laughs> There's I'm a sorry. lot of that's things. That's the in perfect life. gotcha statement of life. I don't need it, but I want it. <laughs> yeah, and it's yeah, got me yeah. good. I tell you that much, Tyler. It's got me good, dude. Two hundred thirty thousand gotcha. this month, dude. Like, How many Nat fives have you pulled? In total. Oh my god, forget it. My rates are my rates haven't been bad. Like I'm yeah, you know, I'm ahead on rates for sure, but ugh. you've been pulling blessings on everyone, right? Everyone they didn't miss a blessing on any one of them, and I'm just getting wrecked. I am getting wrecked. It's so sad. I've pulled for I pulled four fire bisons this month. I got seven wind reuse. I didn't get any water reuse this month. Um I got 
<laughs> I got two wind bisons. Like, I just you didn't feed them, did you? Or you kept them all? All of them, bro. Damn, dude. We, 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 so you said you, you should have kept them. They look cool, crystals? bro. You got like fifty Street Fighter units, like. Crystals, aside from like all the other scrolls I've been getting and events, it's probably and... somewhere around like four thousand scrolls. Yeah, all the packs. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, okay. the pack with scrolls. All the packs too. Maybe, yeah, maybe closer to forty-two hundred scrolls. That's uh, well, I, I I was I was I summon I stream every other day, so I was summoning around two hundred or so scrolls each stream. But I decided that it's too much work and I'm tired of it, so I'm just gonna wait until like uh, the thirtieth or the thirty-first, whichever day I stream on, and I'm just gonna go super nuts that one day and just do you know a thousand, start one day early. Whatever. It'll take a while. And, get it. and if I can't get it, then I just can't get it. Nothing I could do. But you know, nobody can say I didn't try. You know, but I'm I'm fucking trying, man. Like I am trying, kid. You know what I'm saying? I'm fucking trying. <laughs> Just gotta tell that guy with that button, dude. Hit that button first. Yeah, bro. Yeah, hit the button. It, it, it's punishment, by the way, because it was one of the first ones I summoned was Fire Ryu. It was a blessing. It was Fire Ryu and Fire Bison. I called Thompson. I said, Thompson, oh, what no. am I? He said, Fire Bison looks good. <laughs> he, he does look way better, though. I but... took Fire Bison. I've pulled five Fire Bison since. Haven't seen a Fire Ryu again. Uh, Just like that time I said, Water <laughs> Demon for something. I skipped over Water Demon for Barbara, I think it was. Feels and I dude. never see no water demon again. Feels bad. That's only two I'm missing. All right, gonna go ahead and hop over to the last topic here. Open discussion. We got a little time left. All right, went a little bit um, over the time that we were estimating today, but I mean, we got a little time left here. Is there anything you guys want to bring up to talk about? Any from all the topics or anything like that? Sometimes you guys have some questions. To ask the, um, some of the people here. Mm. <clears throat> go ahead. All right. If not, we can just end it off as well. That'll be. I'm not um, sure. I want to talk about RTA in general. Go ahead. So, like, no, it feels like, it seems like, from what I can gather, it doesn't seem like many people are playing RTA. And this is usually, like, the busier time when it comes to people playing RTA. It's because it's building up to SWC. More people are playing it because people are watching it. I feel like this year it's been really, really quiet. Even Special League showed it in the rankings, right? Like, if you broke the G1 border... You would you you were literally like you were top one thousand, guaranteed. You broke the G two border, you were like rank four hundred almost. So, is there is that is that reflecting a, a big issue in the game? I just want to know what your guys' thoughts are and what yeah. they could potentially do about it. I think, I, the corona, I think the Corona thing is affecting it. Just people not being in the mode, like you know, like when you see your favorite streamers or your favorite players like competing and stuff, you know, like. You're more enticed to do it too, and I just think that because of the whole Corona situation, people are just kind of out of the out of the loop of doing it. You know, like, like they don't have the the drive, you know, to just even play. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm lazy every season, but you know, so I can't really make the claim for other people. But that's I, what I, I want I, to I, see. I don't really have the drive, you know, to do it either. <laughs> Genshin, I want to say that. Oh. I change I change the topic. I change the topic. <laughs> Oh. All right, so the question is, how is Genshin Impact killing RTA and Summoner's War? Yeah, that's a really good point, I guess. Yeah, because people busy games. playing that game. Yeah. You know, RTA takes three hours. You know, like, two of your wings takes two, three hours. So you can play two, three hours of another game, I guess, yeah. yeah. But like, so, no, you could farm I, I know, I know, Genshin. I know it's a meme, though, but um, typically through the end of the year, there's a lot of new games getting released. So, I mean, it can be a factor as well, right? What do you guys think? I mean, it's a factor that people are trying out new games, playing different games, getting interested in different stuff as well. So, you know, they put Archie at the back burner, right? They farm, right? I think there's a lot of people. Some people think people are not playing some of Everybody's playing. I would say even more people are playing now. I've experienced a lot of lag. I think people are just online auto replaying more now than before. Like before people who didn't farm are now on farming because of this replay thing. But RTA is slower. Yeah. Go ahead, Tyler. You're gonna add something. I was I was gonna kind of go with that. Um, oh, sorry. Go ahead. The numbers of players are up a lot. The numbers of players are up very significantly. Our numbers are dropping in terms of viewership in the Summoners War directory, but I mean that makes sense, right? We have lull periods in every game. Every game has lull periods. Like in Final Fantasy XIV, it's between each patch. You know, there's a lull period where people just don't want to do or play the game anymore because there's like there's nothing new. In Summoners War, it comes down to like people are kind of just like waiting for the tournaments, right? When the tournaments come up, people are like super interested and they want to watch. But like on the in between periods, we're spending our time doing other things because we have this time to ourselves right now. You know, we've had 
six months of either really bad or no game releases, right? We haven't had anything really that good in a long time. So people are just hard binging on the new stuff that's coming out, right? And and even even Genshin will will probably suffer that same issue. They're planning patches six weeks in between for like big content updates. The people who play really hardcore will play for a week, two weeks, and then we'll have like a lull period where they can kind of just like do dailies and basic stuff. Games go through these cycles nowadays because that's just the common meta for games. If you play, if you are a game that's not um, like a single player game or like a you know true diehard competitive like a MOBA or like. Uh, or like you know, like a shooter like CS:GO, you're always gonna have these phases where you have lots of content and then a drop off, and then it'll come back and then it'll swing. And Summer's War is going through that right now. We've mitigated it in a way that we want people to still play the game by adding auto farming, so it allows you to keep Summer's War in everyone's life, but less people are playing RTA. So like, I think it's a good thing. I think it's totally fine. Um, I don't think it's too much of an issue. To be I honest, too, had... the side thing on, on the top of all this, aside from Genshin, or whatever, cutting into it. Auto farm is what's cutting into it because it's either I spend three hours playing RTA for nothing or I farm for those three hours. I have time. I could still play another game or do the dishes, eat dinner, whatever it is. And I'm gaining right for those three hours. You're going to gain something. It's the auto farm that's making it right. Cause if you have to press replay every time, why not just press start battle, right? And do some RTA. Now it's like, do I waste the three? I only have three hours today to play summoners war. Do I waste it on, rta or do i try and get a new rune you know what i mean that auto farm thing is killing rta too man you, know, you can't you can't cut that part out for sure like because i like i said i'm a bad example as i'm lazy to rta regardless of auto farm or not but because of auto farm i am less enticed to do rta it's like man do i stop and do rta or should i just you know do 10 more battles you know of, of dragons you know what i mean like it's more worth it just to farm because you don't really get anything from rta you know at the end of the day yeah. So that, you that, know? Know, and that like everybody, everybody for the most part kind of knows where they are right like i know i'm like g2 g3 you know you know you're like g1 g2 you know whatever it is like you can get there whenever you want you know what i mean i could just go play you know two weeks straight and get to my ranking close the season at you know call it a day but instead of just playing 30 wings that mean nothing in the beginning right now i could be farming you know what i mean so i think that i think that auto farm thing is destroying really, the RTA. Yeah, the you're really stage. only playing RTA right now if you want to have if you want to play for fun. Like that's right. literally the exactly. only reason you're doing it right now cuz you don't have to grind the whole season like we used to. You know Tyler, but even if you like it though, right? Is it more worth it to spend 3 hours fun or 3 hours of game? You know what I mean? Like that's the Sometimes. thing. That's why it's, you know, it's, hard. Hard. it's hard. It's hard to figure that out, you know? That's why I think, I think that Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. No. All I was going to say was like it may seem fun, Tyler, as you're saying you're having fun with it. But there may be other people that are in like the fighter ranks who might be pulling guys who are having fun, who are guardian players, and getting absolutely slaughtered because you know they're, they're a true fighter player fighting against you know people that are high conqueror or guardian rank because they're just having fun. But suddenly, all these fighter players aren't having fun doing RTA. It's like, how do you find the right balance? Is it, I think, when I look at the RTA reward system. Right now, it only re really rewards the top 10% of players that do RTA. Is that fair that 90% of players miss out on yes. a reward in the game? Yes. Should they actually, make yes. it? Yeah, actually, yes. I, I hard agree. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. A lot of um, and the like reason that. is because if you're putting if you're putting it and you're saying that why why should I be allowed to play the game the way I want to play the game because it's hurting somebody else, competitive games don't exist. Right, that that kind of like moral logic doesn't really work in a game like this, and and in any game that is competitive, right? Smur smurfing is frowned upon, but it's not like I'm smurfing. I'm just not actively trying my absolute hardest to win, right? And I'm not hurting anybody by doing that either, because anyone who beats me gets points. Oh, right? sorry, it's not like, it's, not like it's a team use... game where I'm like throwing the match for everybody. Uh, I, I it's was not like playing use... like Overwatch or League. That is an example, but let's say for those people that are literally autoing through in the fighter ranks and farming points those are that uh, those are the sort of people i'm referring i'm referring to the people that literally just hit the play button put their device on the side come back and then hit replay on the next rta wing that they get i think those people are more the issue i'm just saying that um there are people that aren't in the ranking brackets where they should be and this is probably some of the bigger issues for some, like for the majority of the players and what can they do about it to make more people enticed to play rta if that's one of the bigger issues that that we deal with from the, well, that lower ranking players deal with for the majority of the season. 
Uh, I think they just have to make the they just have to do some kind of um, rank lock kind of system. Like they, we've talked about it before many times on the podcast. We gave them some great suggestions on what they need to do, but they got to do a rank lock. Um, they got to make it so that uh, people can't auto as well. They can't. They got to make it so people can't be AFK for a while. If it's AFK for X amount of turns, the match just loses and go see the other person, right? Like so they can't just walk away. Like these simple things that they can implement will help out. But at the end of the day. RTA is where it is right now because of a multitude of factors. You can't just blame one thing. You can't say rewards aren't good. Uh, people are smurfing this and this because it all culminates yeah. because of the fact that we have less people playing RTA. That's why, you know, everything is the way it is. You're going to match up with people that are not your rank, right? Let's say it's a regular matchup. It's not an auto or a farmer, right? You're going to not match up evenly. Matchmaking is going to be uneven because we don't have people playing, right? Without enough people playing, you know, we can't improve everything it all trickles down right so it it all it, that's what that's a tough thing that i think you know yeah. they got to figure out though like what is they have to do to do this because there's too many factors that all intertwine there, there needs there's to there's be more a than base one problem level for reward. sure yeah there there is no base level reward for playing rta right mm. and while while i still think that rta will always reward the top 10% or whatever like c1 plus or even like c3 plus there is no reward basically for being low rank. Like there's no reward for doing wings regularly. There's no reward for even doing like one wing per day or anything like that. Right. That's why people don't want to play because they know that they can just play at the end of the season, get the same reward as if they played every single day. Right. There's no incentive to play regularly. I'm going to be honest. I don't even think even if I finish G2, G3, I don't think the reward for, it's not for me that reward is not really for me because i'm not someone who spends on the game occasionally only and uh getting only a skin for playing the whole season yeah it's not really what i'm looking forward to i'm playing more for the competitive spirit and uh, for the fun i guess yeah, I, I kind of agree with God Cog too. Like, you know, Lucky made a point before only 10% of the community gets rewarded for playing, right? But, like, realistically, for all your hard work, is it really that much of a reward? I think the whole the whole pride or competitive, you know, the competitive aspect of it is the only reason why I play for, you know? Like, like a skin is cool. Don't get me wrong. I love the skins. You know what I'm saying? I always, you always want to have the skins. You know, I get it. But it's like, at the end of the day, if you think about it, to do a thousand wings a season just to get three skins is not all that exciting. You know what I mean? Not for nothing. You know, like it's, it's really a rather shitty reward in the grand scheme of rewards, you know, like I feel like there's a like hundred different things I could think of that'll, you know, supersede giving you a skin, you know? Yeah. So uh, one thing I wanted to say though, is that that's why I came up with some ideas of new modes that they should do. Right. Uh, in a lot of games, right? We have Hearthstone. We have all these other games where there's the main mode, right? You can queue up. You can play your main mode, right? You can use your cards. You can play. But then there's that arena mode, right? Or that or that um, that mode you can go in and uh, you can play and it's kind of random. You get random stuff and you play ra against random people. And depending on how well you do, um, you get rewards. I think that would be something cool to implement in Summoners War, right? You pay X amount of crystals, right? Which can be free to play because you can get crystals free to play, right? It's not a payment to get in crystals you go in right you get x amount of scrolls you pop them and then you you go in and do your battle right a little bit of rng in there as well but it could be fun right you summon an at five you summon a nap four you just play it as is right if they want to implement some kind of stat boost they can do a stat boost similar to predator right all your characters get 10x uh, stats right if they want to actually give more realistic stats than just the base stats with no runes right they can do like a 10x for all those zero runes still but just 10x off the off of the base so that you know tanky units actually feel tanky right damage units feel like they do damage right and you got to play and use what you have against other people right <clears throat> obviously some people are saying specially but i would love to see an actual mode that's in there like that a, a, a no. fun mode i think players would enjoy that Right, there's no smurfing in there. Everybody's random. Your skill is all that you can put into there. Your skill and your luck, which I don't think that's bad of his luck, right? Shoot, you queue in and you know, I don't know how many scrolls you summon, you summon X amount of scrolls. Somebody's got three nat fives, right? It's like, okay, so be it. You know what I mean? Like that guy got lucky. Yeah, now comes the second question. When we get into this and we summon, do we get to keep the units? You know what I mean? Like, I think that'd be cool. You pay X amount of crystals, a, a premium, you go in, you summon, you keep the units, and it also gets 10x for you to battle in that mode, right? Something along those lines would be Yeah. Uh, would be pretty fun but that that would re like relight that fire of fun in rta because now players are doing the rta right even though you're doing it a different mode you're doing rtas so 
Yeah, I think that's a great idea. But it's um, big. It's a big. It's a. It's a big addition. I played. To the game. I played Hearthstone, mm -hmm. and I played Arena. Of course, it's the most fun thing for me to do in Hearthstone. And the good thing about Arena, you spend like 150 gold, I think, to enter, mm -hmm. but you always get in return almost the same amount that you invest. As long as you get six right. wins, like, even if you, even if you like, yeah, even if you don't do that good. You always get a pack back, I think, and sometimes you get a bit of gold or whatever. Uh, the, 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 word, the word arena is not arena, by the way, guys and girls. When we said arena, it's Hearthstone Arena, right? But Hearthstone. we're we're talking about summoners who are having that arena effect, not not summoners who are arena. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I think it's All a right. good idea, man. Real quick, Great sorry idea. to interrupt. I'm gonna right. drop out a little early. I no, we're, we're done. We're actually we're actually ending off here. It was, it was went a little bit too far, actually. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so thank you guys for joining in. We had some great topics here today. I uh, appreciate you guys joining us uh, very much. I'm going to put the links to everybody down below. Everybody who's here is streaming quite a bit. And leave your comments. Love to hear what you guys have to say and your suggestions. I'll see you guys in the next live stream or see you guys. podcast. Nice podcast, guys. Peace. Thanks. 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 Have a nice. See you later, Pat. Yeah. Yeah. See you guys later.